Howdy folks, once again this is Donnie coming at you with another tutorial in the Linux storage management series. And in the previous videos we've looked at how to create partitions using both the MBR and the GPT schemes. We've looked at how to format and activate a swap partition. In this video we'd like to look at how to format and mount a regular Linux data storage partition. But first, I'd like to say a few words about file systems. And the word file system has a couple different connotations. It can mean the manner in which directories are laid out on the Linux hard drive. But in this case, I want to look at the alternate meaning, which means the method that we're going to use to prepare a partition to accept data. Because once you create that partition, it's not yet ready to accept data. You have to format it using some sort of a file system. If you're coming over from the Windows world, you probably know about the FAT file system and the NTFS file system. FAT stands for File Allocation Table. It has nothing to do with anyone's physique, and it's been around forever in various incarnations. It started out in the dark days of DOS, and it's been updated a little bit. It's still with us. It's still the default file system for your USB memory sticks. But for mainstream Windows use on computers, it has been pretty much replaced by the NTFS file system. And then if you're into Windows servers, you may have heard about the REFS file system, which stands for Resilient File System. That was introduced with Windows Server 2012 R2. Now, in Linux file systems, there's, there's a lot more of them, but there are only a few that we care about for right now. There are other Linux file systems besides the three that I've listed here that have either been deprecated because nobody really uses them anymore, or they are for maybe high-performance clusters or high-performance storage or distributed storage or something like that. We're not going to get into those right now. Right now, we're just going to look at these three mainstream file systems which are in most common use. So the EXT4 file system is the default file system for most Linux distros. For general purpose use, yeah, it's okay, especially for a home user. But, you know, it's, it works out well for servers, too, as long as, you know, you're not really needing really, really, really huge partitions or as long as you don't need to store really, really huge data files. For those uses, you would want to go to something a bit more robust, like the XFS file system. XFS is the default file system for Red Hat Enterprise distros, and that includes like CentOS, Oracle Linux, and it's also the default file system for SUSE home partition. Okay, so if you have an OpenSUSE distro or a SUSE enterprise distro, this will be the default for the home partition. And then finally, we have BTRFS, and this is the default file system for the SUSE root partition. It it is available in Red Hat Enterprise 7 and its various clones as a technology preview, but recently the Red Hat people have announced that it has been deprecated because even though it's been around for a while, well, a lot of people feel that it's not really mature enough. It hasn't made enough progress in order to go mainstream. The one exception to the rule is SUSE. So, but still, though, the BTRFS is pretty cool technology, has some cool features to it, and, you know, there's a possibility we might talk about it in a future video, but for right now, we're just going to concentrate on EXT4 and XFS. So, let's go on over here to our virtual machine, and first, let's go ahead and do a quick review of what partitions we have created. So we'll do like this. We'll do fdisk dash l dash dev sdb because we know that we used sdb for our MBR type partitions. And so we see there we actually have three different partitions that we can work with. We've already set our sdb1 
up for a swap partition. We cannot use SDB2 because it is an extended partition, but we can format either SDB5, 6, or 7. So let's go ahead here first, and we'll do sudo mke2fs-t ext4, like so. And let's go ahead and format SDB5. Now this is going to be really, really quick because these are super small partitions. They are much smaller than what you would find in real life. But let's go ahead here and see what we got. All right, so we got it. We now have an ext4 partition. But we still can't use it because we have to mount it. We cannot directly write to an SDB type device we have to actually create a mount point and then mount the partition. Now to see what we actually have mounted, we can just use the mount command without any pseudo privileges. And you see there, there's a lot more stuff than we need to see because we're looking at all the system D type stuff, which we don't really need to be concerned with right now. But let's say that we just want to see what we have mounted as far as our actual data partitions go. We can do mount and pipe that into grep to look for SD devices. And we can see that we have dev SDA1 is our boot partition. And we see that it is mounted as an XFS partition. And uh, of course, this is a CentOS machine, so it would be XFS. And we see the various mount options there that we have for it as well. We'll get into the mount options later rather than doing that right now. Right now, we just want to concentrate on how to actually format the partitions. And then we can also do like this. And this will show us our logical volumes. Again, it is an XFS type of logical volume. And we can see that by the slash there, it says CL root on slash. That means that we have a root partition mounted as this logical volume. And as I keep saying, we'll get into logical volumes later. We're not going to worry about that right now. So let's go ahead here and create a mount point. We'll go out to the root of the partition. Now, there are various theories about where to put a mount point. Some people like to put mount points in the top level root of the file system. That's fine. It works. Some people like to put them in other places, like for example, the MNT directory. And that's fine too. That's what it's there for. And let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and do it in MNT. You see that there's nothing there just yet. So what we're going to do is create a directory and let's just name it data. And so there is our directory, and that's fine. And so now let's go ahead and mount our new partition. And to do that, we're going to use the mount command again, except this time we do need pseudo privileges. It's going to be dev sda or sdb5, rather. So that is the partition that we just formatted. And we're going to mount that under this MNT data directory that we just created. So even though that directory that we created for our mount point directory is on the SDA drive, it will serve as our portal into the partition on the SDB drive. So now we can go ahead and look at our mount information again. And indeed, we see now that we have the SDB5 partition mounted as an ext4 type on MNT data. And we can look at that. Hey, that looks the same, but we can just go ahead and CD into it, do an ls-l. And we can see that lost plus found directory in there. That gets created automatically every time you mount a partition that is formatted with some sort of an ext file system. 
this is supposed to aid in data recovery if uh, the need for that should ever arise. So anyway, that's our ext4 file system. Let's now go ahead and mount, or format rather, an XFS file system. So for that, we're going to use mkfs.xfs dev. And this time, let's go ahead and, before we do that, let's go ahead and look at gdisk. Because I want to show you that this works the same regardless of whether you're using MBR or GPT partitions. It doesn't really matter. But we can do gdisk-l for dev uh, sdc. Okay. And let's go ahead here and use our SDC2 for this one. So mkfs.xfs dev SDC2. And again, it's very, very fast because it is a much smaller partition than what you would be working with in real life. But you do see that the output is a little bit different. It's giving you a different set of information than what the ext4 partitioning utility gave you. And we can go ahead here and let's go into mnt directory again. Okay, so there's our data directory. And let's now go ahead and make another directory for another mount point. And what shall we call it? What shall we call it? Let's call it uh, stuff. Real imaginative name there, right? So there's our stuff. And we'll do sudo mount dev sdc2 mnt stuff. And let's do our mount command again to see the information. And there you have it. So we have SDC2 on the MNT stuff mount point. And it is type XFS. And let's go into stuff. Here you see that with the XFS formatting scheme, you do not get that lost plus found directory. So it does its data protection scheme a little bit differently than what the EXT4 file systems do. And the only other thing I want to show you right now is how to unmount a partition. Well, to begin with, you can unmount all these partitions we just mounted just by rebooting the machine because we've not made anything permanent yet. But if you want to unmount a partition without rebooting the machine, you can use the umount command. That's not unmount, but umount. I don't know why they left the n out of there, but they did. They deliberately, I guess, deliberately misspelled unmount. So it's umount instead. So all we got to do is do dev. No, we don't need to do the dev either. All we need to do is mnt and stuff like so. And that will, ah, except it's busy because I'm still in that directory. Ah, okay. So let's do it again here. All right. So that's all we got to do. We don't need to specify the dev sd whatever just specify the mount point itself, and that will unmount the partition for you. So we can do that, and we can see now that our SDC2 is no longer mounted. So that pretty much wraps it up for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to look at how to configure things in order to make our mounting permanent so that these partitions will be mounted automatically the next time we reboot the machine. So that's all for now. If you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.